from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I love it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's another kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Are we getting flooded with their versions of this particular story? And uh, <laughs> Yes, it's right up our alley, of course. It's right up our alley, yes. Wrestling's not something we talk about often on the program, but this story is something we talk about. Let me read a version from, uh, this is a Canadian newspaper, the Edmonton Sun. And the uh, perpetrator of this crime uh, is from Canada, so uh, it's not a stretch to be reading a story from Canada. This is an opinion piece written by someone named Mindell Jacobs at the Edmonton Sun. She says... There is something profoundly disturbing about the cult of celebrity that seemingly protects revered sports figures from scorn when they commit heinous acts. By the way, wrestling is not a sport. Not the wrestling we're going to talk about here. It's a TV show. It is not a sport, okay? Okay. It's not, no, Gary, not a sport. And when Vegas starts taking action on it, then I'll believe it's a sport and not a day before. The piece continues. Rest in peace. Writer and wrestling guru T.J. Madigan wrote of Chris Benoit, who strangled his wife, suffocated their seven-year-old son, and, with perverse logic, placed a Bible beside their bodies before hanging himself on a weightlifting machine. My God, if they had a camera, they could have put that on SmackDown. Rest in peace? How about burn in hell? Scads of reader email poured into the sun yesterday, honoring Benoit as if the deaths had been a freak accident, instead of the cold-blooded handiwork of yet another angry man who murdered his family because things weren't going his way. What a bad call it was to put on a three-hour tribute to Benoit on WWE's Monday Night Raw with footage from the wrestlers' matches over the years and accolades from his peers. It would have been far more appropriate to cancel the broadcast altogether. Can't do that. Product placement advertisers, you can't do that. She says it could have been replaced, perhaps, don't hold your breath for this, darling, with a documentary on the scourge of domestic abuse. Yeah, but hosted by Vince McMahon, yes. With a follow-up panel of experts discussing the warning signs of potential batterers. One of the big red flags is when one spouse, typically the woman, makes a move to leave the other. Controlling, vindictive men don't take kindly to being dumped by their wives or girlfriends. And Benoit's wife, Nancy, reportedly filed for divorce in 2003, alleging domestic abuse. In her, by the way, the guy's a wrestler. If he started abusing you, why are you with him? Why did you stay there? I mean, why did you tolerate it even one time? One time and you should have been out. And by the way, this message to all of you being abused out there right now. Uh, if somebody slaps you or takes a hand to you one time, understand where I stand on this issue. One time. There's not even a debate. You get out. 
Do you understand where I'm coming from? You get out. The first time somebody slaps you, punches you, somebody tries to injure you in any way, you just get out. There's no debating, no discussing, no therapy, no counseling. You just get out. When you don't, this is what can happen to you. The piece continues. This is Mindell Jacobs of the Edmonton Sun. She says, in her court papers, Mrs. Benoit claimed her husband, quote, lost his temper and threatened to strike the petitioner and cause extensive damage to the home and personal belongings of the home. She also expressed fear for her safety and that of their son, Daniel, and asked for custody of Daniel as well as child support. Obviously, Nancy should have never gone back to her husband. <laughs> well, but she did. Of course, we have to make excuses for that, and the uh, columnist uh, is no exception. She says, but like many women who believe their abusive husbands will change, she reconciled with him after a short separation. Now, you see, I agree that men who are violent are sick. And if they commit crimes, they should be convicted. No doubt about it. But any woman who believes that an abuser is going to change is also sick. And that person immediately needs to go into therapy. I mean that day. That day. You kidding me? Jesus. Says here she subsequently filed to have the divorce papers and a restraining order dismissed. Possibly in recent weeks, Nancy had concluded that the man, beloved by wrestling fans everywhere, wasn't going to change his stripes, and it was time to get out. But immature, angry men don't always let their wives walk away. Benoit, known as the Canadian Crippler, <laughs> he was just living up to his name. Canadian killer. <laughs> he may have been a consummate professional and a winner in the ring. And by the way, how do you be? How can you be a winner in the ring? This is all phony. Wrestling is fake, and we all know it's fake. And that's that. Please. But he was a pathetic coward in real life. It says here, rippling muscles, exaggerated emotion, and high drama are great for wrestling. A flying headbutt doesn't work on the home front. Marriages break up all the time, and most separated couples, thankfully, move on without a lot of storm and drong. Throw a little German in there. It seems Benoit was a member of that stubborn minority of petty, dysfunctional men who would rather kill their families than lose them. By the way, let's not forget to note, he killed himself, too. It's not like he's walking around, strutting around like a rooster or something after he killed the rest of his family. The guy killed himself. Probably roid rage, folks. <laughs> but uh, let's turn this into a big uh, platform for discussing so-called domestic violence. Says here, U.S. authorities are apparently investigating whether steroid use triggered the murder-suicide. I don't buy that suggested explanation for a minute. Benoit was a murderer, plain and simple. The only difference between Benoit and all the other men who've killed their wives and sometimes other family members is that Benoit was in the spotlight before he became a savage. Wade Keller expressed mixed emotions on his blog on the Pro Wrestling Torch website. This is a woman who went searching out wrestling blogs on the Internet. Yeah, I, I never missed that. Keller wrote, it is really sad for those of us who admired Chris Benoit's work over the years that his body of work is now permanently so. His body of work. Yeah, he was another Rembrandt. He was another Van Gogh. This guy was a Pablo Picasso. <laughs> okay, working with fake, uh, fake scripts, fake opponents, uh, doing fake takedowns. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. It's body of work. Yeah, of course you write a wrestling blog, you moron, you geek, you freak. 
It says here, meanwhile, the WWF site limited its remarks about Benoit yesterday to a brief statement. It said Benoit always took great pride in his performance and always showed respect for the business he loved, for his peers, and towards his fans. And the writer finally writes the last line, tragically, that respect didn't extend to his family. May I add, uh, dear, or to himself. I mean, the guy didn't treat himself any better than he treated the other members of the family. He killed himself, too. Now, may I say, if Mrs. Benoit had left when she originally left and stayed gone, she'd be alive today, more than likely. She'd be alive today. Uh, Mrs. Benoit, I believe her name is Nancy. Nancy Benoit is dead today. Because she, instead of staying gone when she left, she went back thinking she could change him. He was gonna change. And another one who was gonna change. You know, he's, he's violent, but he's gonna change. They never change. They don't change unless they want to. And there's not a vagina in the world that has ever changed the man. Forget it. It doesn't happen. You've got to be kidding me. She already left him and filed for divorce. Had she stayed gone, she'd be alive today. Why do we look at these stories this way? Oh, it's all about domestic violence and uh, what a batterer he is. And you know, you can't have a you can't have a batterer without a willing victim. A willing victim. She volunteered to go back there after he'd been violent. At this point, she was a willing victim. She was the one who needed help. And I don't mean help from the police. I mean help from a psychiatrist. He had his own problems. God damn it. If he committed uh, violent acts against anybody, he should have been in prison. He should have been uh, punished to the fullest extent of the law, of course. But why do we blame the whole thing on, on the guy who is the victimizer when the victim volunteered to go back into the lion's cage? I mean, I don't get it. Do you? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. You're so rageful. I have never heard this word, by the way, rageful. But uh, all right, I'll assume your IQ is in the triple digits for the sake of argument. I've never spoken to a psychotherapist. Uh, You're a psychotherapist, or are you just a psycho? The Tom Likas Show. (laughs) The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Anna, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. Um, I have to say, I, I was really happy to hear that uh, in regards to this wrestler, um, I was happy to hear you call him a murderer and... Uh, bring up the whole domestic violence aspect of it rather than focusing on the fact that, you know, it's possibly roid rage. Well, I, um, by the way, I do think I do think steroids were involved. Uh, uh, when the police came to the home, anabolic steroids were found. Yes. I mean, obviously, obviously the man was using steroids, but, um, you know, using steroids isn't necessarily going to make you kill your family. Uh, not necessarily, but certainly uh, uh, using steroids can, in combination with other factors, uh, right. cause you to go into a rage. There's no doubt about that. Right. But from what I've but read, my Here's my here's attitude about it, just so you understand. Ju- just like we don't excuse, like you, when somebody gets caught for drunk driving, mm-hmm. you don't say, well, the guy, what do you want? The guy was drunk. I mean, <laughs> the fact is he made conscious decisions. Exactly. And therefore, you can't use being drunk as an excuse, and we don't. And same right. thing here. Nothing excuses what happened. And I, that's the right. point I want to make. I do believe Roy Rage was involved. Definitely. But, but Definitely. who put the needle in the guy's arm? I mean, exactly. uh, I didn't. Uh, nobody else did. I mean, it was a clear, it's a clear, this is your typical case of domestic violence. Um, you know, the fact that he killed his wife on a Saturday and then killed his son on a Sunday. Or I think he killed his wife on a Friday and then killed his son the following Sunday. I mean, clearly, you know, his intentions was to kill her first. Um, oh, and 
So I wanted to comment on, you know, how you talk about how women in domestic violence situations should just leave. And, of course, they should just leave. But it's really interesting how, why women don't leave or why they go back. Um, the majority do go back or maybe not even leave at all. Um, a lot of it has to do with the women are living fear. And also, it's, they're traumatized. These men control them. These yeah, men. But, but you do understand yeah. that there, there's a day when that first swing takes place. Before right. that, there weren't any. Right. And usually, see, it doesn't start off with a swing. It starts off with words. You're so fat. You're so ugly. You're nothing. You're worthless. Well, Derek, wait, wait, wait. wait. Now, hold, stop right there. There are women who say the same things to men, and oh, they yeah. are just as hurtful to men. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, what I don't like is the idea that when domestic violence is being discussed, that we demonize men. Because yes. because many studies have come out to show that women commit as many violent acts as men, yes. but be, the police don't act on them. They be, guys who report this stuff get laughed out of the police station. Oh yes, it's true. It's true. I mean, I I work at a domestic violence organization, and I'm very aware. I answer the hotline. I get calls from men as well. It's a fact that women can be abusive. It's just also a fact that. It's more women that are reporting it than men. If there were more men reporting it, then there would probably be more awareness about Well, what came first, the chicken or the egg? How many guys called to report it and was like, ha, 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 exactly. be a man, step up to the plate, what are you doing? Right, and there's very little services for men. I mean, I, I struggle trying to find services for men because there really isn't any. Yeah, is there, a, is there an abuse shelter for men? There are. There actually are. Really? Yes, but there are very few. I'll bet there are very few. Very few. Right? As, so and, what I'm saying is, by the way, I, not only have I been around these situations, I, and it's not a secret, I was once arrested and charged with domestic violence, and I went through this system. By the uh -huh. way, I didn't commit the crime. I've had no further incidents like that. I just mm -hmm. simply live alone, and that way nobody can call and accuse me of such a thing. Yeah, but, but that's beside the point. Okay, right. I went through the system and I understand how this works. And uh, I, uh, as part of a plea bargain, I agreed to spend six months going to an office in an office park in Van Nuys where a lesbian came in every Saturday morning and told me and a bunch of heroin addicts and freaks... Uh, that we were all uh, abusers, we were all violent, and, and violence against women is wrong. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and and we were all told that if we did not admit what we did, we would not get out of the class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, had to, I had to lie to get out. Right. Oh, you know, I personally am against those uh, mandatory um, classes that the men, usually it's men, that are put into when they commit domestic violence because they don't work. <laughs> Because well, any more than alcohol education classes work when you get a DUI right. or traffic school works when you get a speeding ticket. I mean, And actually, all it does is make the batterer angrier. Well, yes. And, and, and unlike traffic school where they make you go for one day for eight hours, they make you go for six months at the crack of dawn on your weekend. Right. And of course it makes people angry. And, and you have to pay a lot of money, right? <laughs> and my and, and my result by the way of doing it cuz mm -hmm. I never committed that kind of uh, of violent act and I'm not a violent person. Mm -hmm. uh, and and my my I think my lack of a criminal record shows that to be true. Uh, mm -hmm. the result of it now is I have very little sympathy for people who sit around and allow themselves to be abused. Uh, and and the fact is that it comes that day, the first day somebody raises a hand to you. Mm -hmm. And and so it's not like you've been battered to a bloody pulp over a period of time. One incident. That's, right. But women don't want to leave after that one incident. Well, they think the they typical, can change these guys. Yeah. Well, the typical batterer doesn't start off hitting. The typical batterer starts off, it's it's a slow beating down of, the, of, your, I, of your mind, of I your state I, of mind. I, but see, here's the deal. If somebody is capable of beating down your state of mind or lowering your self-esteem, you have a problem. Well, the well, the thing is, is if this could happen to anyone in any any class, any state of mind, uh, mental illness or none. You, this could happen to anyone because no, most batters start off like the perfect guy. 
They start. Uh, this is, I understand like, all of this. But and it's a slow process where one day you wake up and you realize you're living with a batter and you didn't see it coming. I, no, but, the, but the point is, how many times have you been beaten before you wake up and realize? Well, what happens is usually by the time a woman realizes they're in a battering situation, they're already living with the man. They already have children with them. They're financially dependent. No, usually and it's much harder to leave. Usually these women. Uh, by the way, I've seen it in my own family, and I have seen it with uh, uh, friends who have been in these mm-hmm. situations, or uh, friends of an ex-wife of mine, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact is, these women were beaten several times before they realized they've got a problem. Right. Because they get beaten once, and then the guy comes by with flowers and says, "I'm sorry, exactly. I'm, I'm so sorry." But you see, the thing is. The mm-hmm. first time somebody raises a hand to you, that's the day you get the hell out of there. You right. don't I, wait. You get out that day. Yeah, and what the sad fact is most people give, you know, I love him. I want to give him another chance, like you said, I, you know, but maybe I can change him. Well, most women think like that. You know, well, it's they need, You know what? Those are women who need therapy. And the problem with most Obviously. of the domestic violence problem is that we treat the man like he is the sick one, and we treat the victim like she's just, you know, a victim, as if it was somebody who got mugged or something, instead well, of somebody who, because we, they tolerate that kind of treatment, make it possible for batterers to batter somebody. Well, what we do, I mean, for example, in my shelter, we have them go to mandatory therapy. We have them go to mandatory parenting classes if they have children and focus on the children to break the cycle because most of the time the children have learned the behavior as well um it's a cycle you know and it's a it's a reality right but when 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 a man is sent to uh, a trial for domestic violence Mm -hmm. and a woman testifies why doesn't the judge reach out and say you also are required you are required by this court to go to therapy it does. They do. They, really? They require, they require the women to go to parenting class. As a matter of fact, a lot of the women I work with, their children are taken away from them, even though they didn't hurt the children, but because they stayed with the batterer, they failed to protect the child. Because usually batterers um, hurt the children as well as molest them. Most batterers, it's a power and control thing, and they don't see their children as their children, but as their property. Like, this guy just killed his son. Like, how can you kill your own son? Well, this, because but, he didn't see him. But this woman would be alive today. If, if when he she, left him. In 2003, when she filed for divorce. Which, which I, you know what, Tom, I have to say, I love that you're talking about this, because if there's any women listening right now, and then they're in a situation where a man is putting them down or physically hurting them, but he doesn't even have to be physically hurting them to be a batterer, get out. Get help. Call hotlines. There's hundreds of hotlines and shelters in Los Angeles to call and get help. It, it's, you know, get out. I mean, I would tell you, if a woman ever raised a hand to me or threw an item at me, Call the police. She can go to jail. I, you, know, you know what? I wouldn't call the police because I've had the experience with the police. And if I call the police, the police will arrest me in most cases, not Whoever her. has the mark, whoever has the mark goes uh, I, I is wouldn't even. I wouldn't even take that chance. If a woman threw something at me... I would start packing my bags and get out right. immediately. Get out. I, there, I, there would be no debating it. No, I'm sorry. That it, I have a zero tolerance policy for that. But th- definitely, women get arrested too for battering. I don't want to take the chance as a man right. because the de- the deck is stacked against men. I already went through that. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I do, I do see what you mean. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm just gonna. I, you know what? I have. And by the way, part uh, I I do owe part of the fact that I live alone to my experience with having been forced to go through a class like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, no one will ever be able to falsely accuse me of something like that again, ever. Yeah. Not Good. because they're yeah, drunk, not because yourself. they're stoned, not because they're tired, not because they're insane. Nobody will be able to do that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I, I got arrested after someone called 911 and then hung up. Oh, yeah, and they showed the police showed up anyway. And I was awakened by a flashlight in my face. Me, the big dangerous batterer, got to, to pulled out of bed and hauled downtown. But she must have had a mark for you to go. Was I, this in Los Angeles? No, no, this was in California? Boston. This was in okay. Boston, yes. I don't know their laws there. Yeah, but, but the bottom line here is I, I went through, I, by the way, I, I moved to Los Angeles, and that's where I took the classes. But, but the bottom line is I'll, I'm not going to put myself in that position again. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let it happen. No one's going to get that close to me again. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a shame that you can't let someone get that close to you, but I understand why. Um, I just hope that anyone listening, if they're male or female, if they're in a situation where someone is putting them down, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of a battering situation. And if anyone has physically hurt you in any way, like you said, get out. Get out Ask today. No, yeah. don't, no giving them chances. No saying, but I and love it. Don't tell him. them where you're going. <laughs> don't I, tell them where you're going. Also. I love him. I'm going to fix him. He just needs love. Stop right. it. Yeah, I mean, like I tell I tell my friends, if, if a man is going to disrespect you like that, get away because he's never going to respect you. Well, I totally agree with you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Your most important thing is the woman's rat. That's the second most important thing. Okay, so what's the heart? Your vagina. That's definitely ahead of the rack. No vagina, the rack doesn't know any good. Okay, good point. you got to have both. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about a big story. A big story. Chris Benoit, the WWE wrestler who uh, killed his wife, killed his son, and killed himself. But it uh, turns out that uh, the wife... His name was Nancy. She filed for divorce in 2003, alleging domestic abuse, but then she went back to him thinking he would change. I love him. I'm going to change him. Yeah. Yeah, dear. Now you're dead. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Julie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I want to quickly start by saying how much I respect you for doing education and everything that you do. I really appreciate it. Um, I was calling this situation, uh, meaning the murder-suicide, actually occurred in my family. Um, in November, it'll be five years ago. Wow. My um, step-grandfather killed his girlfriend and then himself, and we found out by reading it in the paper. Wow. And then they went on and had, of course, the memorial service where nothing negative or truthful, rather, was ever even mentioned. Went on as though nothing ever happened, and to this day, they act as though he just died. Like all these wrestling fans were acting like uh, Chris Benoit just died. Because for the family, he was like the hero in the family, and you can't say something bad about a hero. Yeah. Well, as as you heard in the story, if you didn't see it, and I'm but frankly, WWE is not on my top 50 <laughs> list of shows I watch, but uh, apparently devoted uh, this week the entire WWE show on the USA Network uh, to the wonderful career of Chris Benoit. Yeah, I heard about that. That's pretty much the same thing. How bizarre is that? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, before I go, I want to ask you a very important question. Yes. I want you to tell me how much I'm supposed to weigh. I don't know how tall you are. I'm 5'9", 32D. I would say you'd be around 140. Thank you. I'm two pounds under. There you go. I wanted to know that for like five years. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> no problem, Julie. I'm here to help. Forget the murder-suicide. How much should she weigh? <laughs> You see people's priorities at a time like this. <laughs> Should have come down here. We would have weighed in. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Farlan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. wondering what your definition of sports is. Sports? Uh, sports? Not sport. Yeah, sports is a competition where the outcome is not decided in advance and placed in a teleprompter. I would say that wrestling is sports entertainment. No, no, it really it's not. it is not in any way a sport unless it's at the high school and college level where the outcome is not determined in advance. That is, that is, the, that is the test? To me, that is the test of whether something is a sport. It's a competition in which the outcome is not known until the end of the event. 
I, I would put wrestlers up with boxers. I would put them up with um, competitors that... Uh, They're not the competitors. They are not... No, they are not competitors. They are absolutely They are actors. Behind. They're actors with athletic ability. They are not competitors. Um, there's definitely acting, but, but they're... No, no, they, you know, it's not just a little bit of acting. These shows have a script. There is a teleprompter. Oh. There is a script, and before the show begins, they know who is going to win the box of the, the wrestling match. It's not I even understand. by I law in most completely. states. By law in most states, you can't even call it a wrestling match. Understood, but but that, those are those are pretty stringent laws that probably that, don't take a lot of factors into account. And I would say that wrestlers take you know so much abuse. They are, you know... So do construct... Wait, wait, wait. Wait. So do construction workers. Yeah, but construction workers don't get um, injured and don't put... They don't? The, don't? They don't? That, why they do they wear hard hats? Wrestlers do. Why do they wear hard hats? Certainly to protect themselves. From wrestlers what? Don't, wrestlers don't... Yeah, if, if there's an accident, if there's an accident, if there's something unforeseen that happens, but... Wrestlers know very well when they get into a ring and that cage is surrounded with barbed wire and thumbtacks, which is actually pretty much a regular occurrence for those kinds of matches. These are not they competitions. They they're gonna if they injured. know the outcome before the, the, the event begins, it is not a sport. And, uh, you know, uh, okay, well, that's an interesting definition. And, and I mean, that definitely... It's not, just an, inter it's not just an interesting definition. I'm a sports fan. I would never, I wouldn't be caught dead watching a sport where the outcome was in a script somewhere and they're playing out the script. Well, the, the script is very, very loosely done. No, but, says, but the outcome says, is they, determined in advance. Sure, sure. Then it's the not outcome, a sport. The outcome, but how they get to that outcome. I don't care how they get to the outcome. It's not a sport. Well, how many, how, what percent of boxing matches do you think are fixed? Uh, guess what? If we find out they're fit, whether we know wrestling is fixed, uh, so much so that you're, uh, there are laws that say you can't call it a match. Is it not enjoyable to watch a boxing well, match? No, we're not talking about not whether it's fixed. enjoyable. We're talking about whether it's a sport. And if it's fixed, I won't watch it anymore. If I find out that that boxing is fixed, and by, by the way, sometimes I suspect it is. Yeah. If I fi if I ever see evidence that it actually is, I'm out. My, my point is that I think a lot of people slough off wrestling as a bunch of ballerinas getting in the ring in tights. And it's no, so no, tough. I'm sure it's these so guys are all physical specimens, no doubt about it. And they can all take your head off, every one of them, I do believe that. But what, what they show you on TV is not a sport. Now, taking that into account, though, the, you know, the, the brutal nature of the sport and it were the... Why do you keep calling it a sport? It is not a sport. I consider it sports entertainment. It is not a sport. Sports entertainment. It is not. Well, ESPN is sports entertainment too, but doing Sports Center is not a sport either. The sports entertainment is not a sport. The S the ESPY awards are sports entertainment, but they're not a sport. That said, though, I think that we can agree that it is a brutal competition, and these guys. It's not a competition. It's not a sport. They are competitors. There is no competition. You think that there not is no competition. The outcome is determined by a script writer. Understood. They lobby those script writers to have certain. Oh, outcomes please. Do you make. work for the WWE or something? Are you Vince McMahon's lackey? Uh, by the way, speaking of fake, how about Vince McMahon faking his own death recently? It's entertainment. It's uh, oh, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. Sure, it's entertainment. Why would you just do that on the news? Why do they say that George Bush is dead? Or why don't they just go on there and uh, say the war in Iraq was won by the United States? Or well, it's, it's all entertainment. In, George Bush isn't in the business of making money off. Oh of my! Uh, off, 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 well, off, off mental talking. midgets like yourself, please. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, thanks for taking my call. Sure. And first of all, I just want to say about the last guy that you just called. Um, I'm a wrestling fan and stuff, but I, I know it's fake. It's not, it's, you watch it to be entertained, and it's, of course it's fake. The thing I want to talk to you about right now is, like, uh, you said it was most likely a roid rage. I certainly think steroids were involved, absolutely, because anabolic steroids were found at the residence when the bodies were found. 
All right, but hold on. Let's let's think about it. A rage. A rage doesn't last for three days or however long this lasted. It's lasted the whole week. I'm not saying the rage was why he killed himself, but it certainly is probably why he killed his wife and kid. No, I don't think so because there, there's evidence that it was deliberately and rage. If, if it was rage or something, it w he would have beaten his wife to death or something. But it was deliberately done. He w he bound up his wife and, uh, and her ankles and wrists and everything, and and it was death by asphyxiation. Well, I, here's the thing: I don't really care about the involvement of steroids uh, because I believe the people who use steroids use them voluntarily, and I believe you are responsible for your behavior. And uh, if you do something uh, out of control while you're using steroids or heroin or anything else, uh, I really uh, don't care. You should be punished and uh, treated the same way anyway. Yeah, I know. So it's I'm not like it's not like I'm giving him an excuse or giving him a way out. Uh, the guy was a murderer, and had he lived, he should have uh, been punished to the fullest extent of the law. I agree. I, I exactly. I, I agree with you, but I just don't think it was a roid rage, as you're calling it. I'm sure he was insane or something, but it wasn't a roid rage. There's no evidence of rage at all. There's, there's no evidence of rage? Well, I don't know about that. I, I think somebody who goes and kills his wife, and by the way, strangles her, and she struggles to survive. There had to be some rage involved there. Oh, but I mean, it, it was deliberately done. There's there's a difference between deliberate. Th he's been he'd been thinking about this. He'd been thinking about this. If it was just a rage, he would have done it real quick. His wife. Well, we don't know thing. that. You're speculating. Uh, we don't know. We don't know why. Well, it, hang on a second here. Hang on a second yourself. here. Hang on a second. Ed, what did you want to say to Steve? Steve, well, what is the difference? You call it rage or or not rage? He killed his wife and kid. I'm not trying to justify anything. I know. But that. but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter rage or not rage. He killed his wife and kid, and his, and we think his wife wasn't too cult. She was a witch. All right, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Leo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Doing okay. All right, I just call uh give my two cents about the old domestic violence case, the situation as far as uh, as far as it go. Um, personally, I I personally went through the whole thing. Uh, the way the way domestic, I already guys talking about domestic classes earlier, and uh, they they don't work honestly because I'm I'm personally going through this situation right now, which is trying to take care of you know, well trying to take care of what I did whatever, and uh, just the way the way the courts try to get get to you is not is not by is not by learning what you get off these classes you know they try to get into your pockets they figure if they they get into your pockets uh you you won't you won't do it again um as far as the classes go i'm attending them right now and um frankly you'll change if you want to change i'm just giving giving the girls out their heads up um you can't change a guy they'll change they'll change if they want to not not because not because of what you're learning in your classes or, or, or what you say. Guys would change or girls would change both ways, uh, whether they want to or not. You know, so I'm just getting the girls out there heads up and just to, to, look, to, look, to, to look for the red flags. And as soon as you see them or as soon as they pop up, just get out of the situation. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Gonna escalate. That's what you have to do. You have to get out. There's no doubt about it. Debbie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Good. Hey, I just wanted to say I totally agree with the statement of the willing victim. Um, years ago, I was a willing victim, and I left my husband three times. The third time was a charm. Um, it only escalated to worse. So, you know, the women have to know they need to just go. Yes, get right out. Out. Get out, because it's not going to get better. You know, the first time I left, it was only because it was mental abuse. The second time, slightly physical abuse. By the third time, I had been woken up by being choked, by shoes hitting me in the face. I had guns pointed in my face. We'd be arguing in the car, and he would just head to on a different direction playing chicken saying i'm ending it all it was crazy it just escalated and i feel if i had not left i would not be here today no well, you're probably right about that debbie thank you so much for the call the tom like show